Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, Jesus arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon and entered a house and would not have anyone know it, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children first be fed. For it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this is saying you may go your way, and the demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed, and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate Our Lady of Lourdes. We don't have to celebrate it, but it is an optional memorial, and today I've decided that we would, using the readings of the day, because I've been to Lourdes several times, and I've marveled at the incredible atmosphere of this little village at the foothills, on the foothills of the Pyrenees in France. It's a little village, certainly a very little village, in the 16th century when Bernadette was alive, and they were trying to pick up sticks for the fire at home. They were a poor family, and they discovered this cave. Our Lady appeared, and then from the 11th, of February to the 16th, she appeared, I think about 18 times or 13 times, I can't remember. And the message was to repent and believe. Nowadays, millions of people go there every year. And what is so special for me about that place is that the disabled and the sick are the princes and princesses of the town. Unlike any other little town, that I've been into, everybody gives way to those who are not well. There are even little paths on the roads demarcated, and no one who is able to walk freely goes onto those paths, but that is for the wheelchairs and those who, who need that assistance. And there are thousands of volunteers that come there dressed very simply with very kind of old-fashioned wheelchairs help the people to the grottos and back into the places of prayer. There are still many healings there today, like we read in the gospel of today. But many people like myself do not go there for physical healing, but simply to have a sense of the healing power of God, to be in a very spiritual space. And I get the feeling that this Syrophoenician woman had the feeling when Jesus entered that area. Because it is not Our Lady of Lourdes that calls people, but it is God. It is the presence of God in that place, in Lourdes. And here we have Jesus, and it's a very human Jesus. And I'd like to pick up on that point today, especially for ourselves during this pandemic. He rose and went away, so there's a sense of, I need to move. Where I am... I'm finished with, I need to get to another place. And many of us may feel that it's time for a holiday. We haven't been anywhere except our homes and the shops. So Jesus has the same need to move when he goes to this place and he enters a house and would not have anybody know it. So he wanted to be alone. And being alone is something that Jesus is portrayed as wanting and doing throughout Mark. The sense of wanting to be alone, not just 
to be away from people, but to be alone with his father. Yet he could not be hidden. And so there's a sense in the story of, I don't know if the right word is irritation, because I don't really like to use that word for God, but a sense of what I want, I'm not getting. The woman comes in because she feels his presence like Bernadette in Lourdes. She falls down at his feet. But there's something within Jesus, and this is the, the attitude I'm trying to connect with, is that even when Jesus wants to be alone and this woman comes and she's at his feet, he still has this great human desire to look after himself, in a sense. And so he has this dialogue with with the woman. He doesn't push her out. Even though he's feeling that he wants time alone, he's still engaging, but he still has that humanity, I think. And he says, but you know, you're not even a Jew, in a sense. You know, so why are you here? It's like us saying, well, if you're not Catholic, don't come to the church. We don't really need you. And Jesus is saying, excuse me, that's very dodgy theology. Because now she goes on and says, but everybody needs even the crumbs. And then somehow he realizes, I suppose a bit like in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying, take this cup away from me. But then the divine comes into him because he's spending time with the God of his understanding. And then he changes his human mind to another level and says, but your will, not my will be done. Here he's saying, for this, I will give you the healing. I might not have felt like it in the beginning, but I realize that I'm here to do this, so I will. I wonder how often we have been like that on our spiritual journey. When we have wanted something so badly, like the end of a pandemic, it doesn't come. And so we feel, Lord, what are you saying to us? And we keep on begging, as we do at every single Mass, praying for all those who have died and are suffering from COVID and the families that are reaping the, the aftermath of somebody dying or being unemployed because of COVID. And so we come back to Mass, like this woman comes back to it, but even the crumbs, Lord, give us the crumbs. I would take this, this, uh, vir- the, this vaccine that they've pulled off the market. If it was offered to me, I would take it. Why? Because it'll give me 20% protection. I think it's that kind of attitude that Jesus is saying, come to me no matter what your attitude and I will heal you. Let us never stop, as this woman never ever stopped, pleading for God for what is truly right. And if we are in the mood of Jesus at the beginning of this gospel, let us know that even Jesus felt like running away. But in discernment, he decided to do the will of God. That's human for us. This is a human God, a divine God that we serve. Let us feel close to a person who feels what we feel. Amen.